Hail Ming. Greetings, Your Majesty. Since we detected the rocket ship in the Eye of Terror, I have taken the liberty of doing some research on this Earth. It's an interesting planet, despite its primitive capacity, but the more interesting things are to be found in the less obvious aspects of their society. Their military, their geopolitics, and so on are all fairly normal, but it is where the battles between themselves are the most petty that one finds the most interesting aspects. As such, I've been investigating a thing they call role-playing. This is where a group of them gather together to pretend to be something that they're not. Not unlike rebels within our own system, gathering together in basements, hiding away from our surveillance and pretending to be free. <laughs> Most amusing. But here we find their petty battles and their strange politics to be almost at their greatest height, and it is here that we may, perhaps, learn some interesting tools to continue the subjugation of our own people. As a matter of course, I gained access to their planetary computer network, the Internet, as it is so uncreatively named. And here we can find the, the spewings and thoughts and ideas of around half the citizens of their measly orb. Most of it is, of course, nonsense. Most of it is, of course, useless. A great deal of it is pornography, which is mildly distracting. And there is one person who seems to have seen the hand of Ming, besides this rocket scientist. His name is Alex Jones, and he bears watching. But nonetheless, here we can find the, the spewings of all manner of peons from within Earth society, and occasionally one can find a, a diamond in the rough. And so it is with this blog, I believe they call it. Me Too, gaming in the age of rape culture. This seemingly meaningless drivel about such an inconsequential hobby appears to be a gold mine for concepts and ways which we could adopt in order to further subjugate our own people. And I know such information will interest you. The writer is so deluded when she believes she lives within a rape culture. Now the earth is not united under a single leader such as you, your majesty, rather it is divided and some nations, if you can believe it, are even more primitive than others. The writer of this blog lives within one of the more civilized, safe, and settled nations of this grimy little orb, and yet claims to be living within a rape culture. My researchers have shown me that in other nations, females of their species can be executed for the crime of being raped an inhumanity that even we do not visit upon such victims. Yet this person, living within this safe environs, believes that she lives within a rape culture. I imagine a spell in the lubricant mines of the rape moon would soon eliminate that idea. I must warn you, Your Majesty, that many of these concepts are hard to grasp and are even rather counterintuitive. It even took me some time, even with my devious intellect, to understand quite what was happening here. And while your own intellect is much more vast, perhaps with a little forewarning, you will understand more quickly and more completely. But these ways of subjugating, controlling and dominating the populace masquerade as being liberating, as being freeing, as being, uh, what's the term, a liberal, all the while, and this is the beauty of it, being dictatorial, being controlling, and being authoritarian. 
Now this point in particular that this person makes is particularly interesting. It's maybe a hard concept to grasp, but on this world they have a thing called uh, court uh, justice. Not not for show trials as we do, not as a not as an entertainment for the masses, but in a genuine pursuit of the truth in cases of criminality or accusations. This would be a tremendous inconvenience to us in cases of treason, having to prove a case. Surely my word is good enough. But here on Earth, the standard procedure is for them to gather together a group of people to present evidence and to see who is persuaded in in what way and by how much, and the whole thing is rather tedious and bureaucratic in a way we would never tolerate. But they have found a way to bypass this. In the court of public opinion, in the mind of the mob, a mere accusation is enough to convict someone. And while they may not be executed, and that's a crying shame, their lives can be destroyed in a way in which even the courts that they have may not apply. The court's punishments are not particularly severe, perhaps a a monetary removal, perhaps a blot on their record, the removal of certain rights. But in the court of public opinion, they can be brought so low as they may commit suicide or never leave their homes. By presenting this as the idea of believing the victim, they are able to make so little as a short 140 character missive enough to get someone fired get them kicked out of their home, lose their opportunities, their their money, their friends, everything, all on the back of a completely unsubstantiated accusation, much as we use, relying on our authority, whereas here they use the authority of the mob. Perhaps a few well-placed agents in our own society presenting these kind of ideas as a method of egalitarianism or some such can get the rebels to end up accusing each other and turning upon each other, as appears to be happening on Earth. Another fascinating tool of oppression that they have designed is the idea that only the alleged victim of a supposed crime has any right to speak, and that while speaking they should not be interrupted, addressed, talked to, corrected, advised, or otherwise communicated with in any way. Imagine in our society, where we do occasionally have advocates, not that it does any good, but how much easier it would be if only the victim could testify, if only the victim could talk, if the victim could not be advised by their advocate in any way, perhaps they would retain their anger towards yourself, your majesty, and damn themselves rather than groveling for mercy. An interesting concept that may allow us to do more spectacular and painful executions. But here, on, on Earth, here we find them denying themselves backing and advice and expertise. After all, it is rather rare that an advocate is the victim of such a crime and other people may perhaps pick holes in their, their arguments, their claims, whatever else, allowing them to strengthen their claim, but no, they, they deny that to themselves. And this may seem self-defeating, but it renders more authority to the mob, and takes authority away from reason and evidence. So while it may appear to be self-defeating, it rather strengthens the whole hysterical edifice of this point and condemn culture that they have created. Something else that may be useful to ourselves. The idea here is that they will create a space that is completely intolerant of any nastiness, uh, of any oppression. While, in fact, again, brilliantly, they're twisting it around to make an oppressive space. In an atmosphere like this, where accusation and counter-accusation can be flung, where nobody is entirely sure what is offensive and what isn't, the default is timidity. No one will present 
any ideas, let alone any radical ones. It makes their space much more conservative, much less effective. There is no tolerance to be found or to be expected for even normal social interactions or the slightest social faux pas. This is paralyzing to such groups. And if we could introduce such concepts within our own small and insignificant rebellions, it would render them most ineffective. Within our imperial bureaucracy and within the secret police, as you know, we tend to hire people from all races on the basis of, of merit. Obviously, a pure Mongo bloodline, given our culture, tends to favour the kind of uh, treachery and creative thinking that we so desire, and so most of our staff are as ourselves, Your Majesty. But we do not preclude anyone, even lizard men, from joining our ranks, provided they show talent, or perhaps spinelessness if we're seeking an informant. However, on Earth, there seems to be this drive not to employ or use the best person for the task, but rather to employ them based upon their species, their race, sorry. Different there, they're all human after all, though they're more divided than our own peoples. Strange, don't you think? But they seem to seek to hire people for positions upon the basis not of competence at their job, not on the basis of education or capability or, or merit, but rather upon these characteristics. It doesn't seem to make any sense to me, but if we could introduce this idea again onto the moons of Mongo and the various subjugated peoples that we have into the rebellions and so on, I believe we could slash their effectiveness by half. If, instead of using rebels who are particularly good at, say, sabotage, they instead just employed more retarded lizard men because they didn't feel that they had enough or it wasn't representative of the population of Mongo, then they would be forced to hire incompetence. They would be forced to recruit incompetence, and as such, more and more of their schemes and plots against your majesty, much as I have done a brilliant job in diffusing them. Even more of them would fail, and this could only be a good thing. Many of these groups on Earth have demonized the use of sexuality, and let me tell you, the job of the secret police would be a lot more difficult if we could not use sexuality in order to gain information, to change people's allegiances, and so on. The idea of taking the power of sexuality off the table is, is frankly horrifying. But they seem to regard it as being a symbol of female weakness rather than of female strength. This is, of course, absurd. Your own daughter uses her sexuality in an incredibly powerful way to get whatever she wants, whether you grant it to her or not. And I have another report on that for you, I'm afraid. Your Majesty. Still, taking sexuality off the table has a further deleterious effect, or further than, than effectiveness, in that it's severely damaging to morale. It's not the only thing they do that damages morale. They regard most humour, it seems, as being tasteless, disgusting, gross, I believe the term is. And they seem to think it's somehow a, a tool for subjugating people rather than a a joke that should not be taken seriously. But again, if we can introduce this concept, this set of ideas into the rebels, it will help destroy their morale, make them even less effective, all the while thinking that they're being fair and, and liberating and progressive. That's the beauty of all of these ideas. They, they masquerade as the very freedom that they're fighting for, while rendering them less effective and putting them into an atmosphere even more authoritarian than your own rule, Your Majesty. Amongst these recommendations is the idea that one should speak up constantly. 
Say in our own context there was a meeting of rebels planning to blow up one of the atomic motors beneath Mingo City, and then it turns out that most of these rebels happen to be men, or people of the forest moon, or perhaps some of Prince Thun's guard, or whatever else. If you do not find yourself represented, this person would say, then you should speak up. I'm somewhat of a, of a student of the, the nature of a Sophon species, the, the many that we have within our realm, and I can all but guarantee you that such an objection would immediately derail any plans to attack us, and would instead fixate the conversation over the hows, whys, and wherefores that the particular people in question were being chosen for the task, and as such the task would be unlikely to proceed at all, and if it did proceed would be far more likely to fail. Further, going into the future, this constant disruption by people who regard themselves as being oppressed for whatever reason, this disruption would lead to more prejudice against them and more exclusion from them, taking more potential allies and useful agents out of the hands of rebels. As such again, this seems to be a concept that we should introduce into the rebellions, so as to make them useless. I could go on, your majesty. There are other examples, and if you so wish, I can go into further detail. But I believe I've presented enough examples of how this works. It masquerades as a demand for equality and, and, and freedom, while in fact being counterproductive, authoritarian, self-defeating, un undermining, all but guaranteeing that whatever rebellion they seek to ferment, whether on Earth or here, will fail, and this is precisely why I believe we should import these ideas to Mongo and disseminate them around the lower classes. But all of it hinges on two particular concepts, and we may perhaps be better off examining these concepts and adapting them to our own societal structure, rather than wholesale adopting the ideas of Earth. One of these ideas is, is privilege, uh, not in the way that we understand it. I myself am privileged, for example. I have wealth, thanks to you, your majesty. I have powers as the head of the secret police, again, thanks to you, your majesty. You grant me the ability to pursue almost anyone or anything that I think may be productive. You allow me to use torture and so on in a way that the average peon would not be allowed to do. These are examples of privilege as we understand it, but they understand privilege not in terms of wealth or power or state-sanctioned authority, but on the basis of colour of skin or sexual preference, whatever that means. Why deny yourselves any pleasure? And it's on this basis that they, that they rank themselves, and so as such they do not fixate necessarily upon their rulers, the genuinely privileged, the, the wealthy who sit upon mountains of gold. No, they turn upon each other. And that is something we can definitely use. Your own policy, outside his own kingdom, the hunter becomes the hunted. A divide and rule, setting one moon against another on the basis of, of species and and geography. That is itself brilliant, your majesty, and helps prevent them from uniting against us. But it is nothing compared to this idea of intersectionality. The idea there is supposedly that one should examine the oppression that people's face as a whole. So the poor may face one form of oppression and say, Lizard men may face another due to prejudice on the basis of their race and the fact that they are stupid, frightened, and their face is inside their mouths. But a poor lizard man, then, is, is worse off than, say, a poor Arborean. Now, how this is brilliant is it divides people not only on the basis that we have, on the basis of people, 
but on the basis of everything else. And so long as there is someone worse off than you, you are not allowed to address your own problems. So while Baron may bridle underneath our oppressive boot heel, he would not be allowed to rebel or to address the problems of his own people, so long as there was a, a lizard man suffering somewhere. The, the bottom of the pile must be addressed first, even though in dealing with his own problems he may well raise the lizard men. But not under this ideology. Something that it is supposedly designed to help people understand each other further divides them into a more atomized and granular level where almost every individual is striving against every other individual to prove that they are the most oppressed, the, the weakest. And if we can introduce this into Mongo's society, oh then, then I believe we can rule unchallenged for another 10,000 years. Hail Ming. Bring me the boar worms! Oh, 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 oh.